Well, have you ever wondered what these big old relief valves look like inside? Today we're going to talk with the valve shop to find out a lot more. We appreciate you hanging out with us today on The Boiling Point. We are fresh off 2015 ASHRAE, where we were actually with the Wounded Warrior Projects and actually able to represent them and always, always, always very supportive um, and appreciative of our troops. Well, we got a newbie today, uh, Rick Walker with The Valve Shop, and he's going to talk a little bit about how a relief valve works. So maybe tell us a little bit how a relief valve works. Okay. A, uh, this particular kind of valve, it's a spring-loaded relief valve. It's what you're going to find typically, typically on a boiler or an air receiver. Um, it works on force, basically spring force keeps the valve closed uh, and you have, when the valve's in service, you have pressure that comes up inside the what what is called the nozzle and when the pressure um, when it equals the spring force, this valve will open up. It will start to open up what they call simmer. It will start to open up and this pressure will de be diverted. This, this component right here is a lower ring and it's on an angle and it'll actually divert the pressure into what is called a huddle chamber that's up inside the guide upper ring. Um, when the pressure meets that area, it'll cause the area to get much larger and the valve will pop. It, it's like, it happens like instantly on this particular kind of valve. Um, what's real critical on these valves, not only is the set pressure, but the, the ring adjustments. The ring adjustments, uh, the lower ring gives the valve lift. The upper ring controls the blowdown. Um, when pressure is flowing through the nozzle, it flows in between that lower ring and the upper ring, and that's considered a secondary orifice, and that's where the flow comes out of the discharge. Uh, if these rings are set improper, these are basically your performance rings, uh, the valve will not function properly, and also it could not get full uh, rated capacity lift. So it's real critical that when a valve is repaired, that these rings are put in the proper place. So the relief valve is actually, let's just say it's set at uh, 125 PSI, mm -hmm. okay? Um, valve's gonna lift right at 125 PSI? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, ASME code tolerance does give you plus or minus three PSI on a uh, valve set at that pressure. It's a section one relief valve. So. Uh, when we bench set the valve, um, we can adjust it accordingly uh, when we're bench testing it. We can, okay. we can give it a little bit on the high side or the low side. So okay. uh, we tend sometimes just to set it a couple of pounds higher only because the valve is cold when we're testing it and when it goes on the operating system, it's sitting in a warmer uh, environment. So, right, right. Um, so you have a spring in there, I'm assuming something like this yes that is in there okay uh, just any old spring going any relief valve uh, not just any spring okay uh, all springs have their own range um, which n normally is with like this kind of valve here the range of the spring will probably be about I'd say about 20 or 30 psi but the springs are they're e either lasered or stamped so if we were to do a BR repair on this valve, we, that's one of the things that we have to look for is to make sure it does have the right spring in it. Okay, okay. And this here, this is your, that a little This bit. is your manual lifting lever. Okay. Um, what's recommended by NBIC is that this valve is there so you can actually, while it's on your boiler, the valve uh, can be manually tested, uh, not so much for set pressure, but just a functional test to make sure that the internals will move up and down in the valve. How often do you um, do that, Rick? It's recommended that you do it every six months. Um, that the, uh, It's done every six months. Uh, as far as a functional test, set pressure test, it should be done um, 
annually, annually. On, a, on, a, on a power boiler 400 PSI or below. Okay, so, so. 400 PSI or below annually Mm -hmm. They're supposed to actually get a test on this valve. That's a recommendation, recommendation by, by national board. By the national yeah. board. Okay. Yeah. So every six months they can actually go out lift the lift the valve mm -hmm. to test it themselves. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 a recommendation. It's it's sometimes up to the jurisdiction, uh, an insurance company of the plant where the boiler is located, or okay. uh, like a state. A state inspector, he, you know, he may require that depending. Okay. okay. So now, Rick, you've talked a little bit about how the actual pieces uh, work, okay, and how the valve works. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's show how this is actually put together here. So we take take the lower ring. Yes. And this, you put that on the nozzle. This right? is the lower ring. It would screw down on the nozzle. Okay. Um, you have the upper ring. Upper ring. Yep. It would basically it would it would screw down in the body here. Then you would have your disc. Your disc would. This is uh, it would be in the guiding area of the the guide upper ring. Then you have your spindle. Then you have your lower washer. Your spring. your upper washer, and then your compression screw. Okay, and then that obviously would be sitting down into yes, uh, the valve, right? Inside the valve, yep. So. All right, well, um, I think Rick's gonna actually show us how he actually tests the valves here, and so maybe why don't we go over to the test stand okay. and check that out. Okay. Well, we appreciate you hanging out with us on the Boiling Point, and hopefully you know a little bit more about these relief valves and how they work inside. Our YouTube channel is there for you to watch. Make sure that you tune in at our boiling points, and the next time we'll actually test this relief valve. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.